Hello, good morning or good day. Welcome to Tony Point with Femi Emmanuel. Welcome to TPGF, Tony Point Global Family Daily Devotional Prayer and Prophetic Altar. This mountain of prophetic interventions. Wake up to this altar daily. First thing before you do other things. Let God force when I wake up be our mantra the rest of our lives. After listening and praying with Turning Point Audio, then turn to Turning Point Booklets, also authored by me. Read the passage for the day and the prayer also. If you subscribe online with a token, the prayer booklet content shall be sent to your phone for your daily engagement. For subscription and subscription renewal, chat with Demi on plus two three four eight zero double five one double zero five one zero. Do so now if you are just hearing this. God bless the members using the two. It will deepen you spiritually. Welcome also to Thursday, day 15 in August 2024. As usual, open your hand and heart to receive what God has sent to us today and be responding with Amen. I receive it. You are blessed. And in the name of the Lord Almighty, I pronounce you blessed. God that brought you this far will see you through. I don't know who I'm saying this to particularly. That challenge you are struggling with will soon become your testimony. God will fight your battles. Our God is a miracle worker. What miracle do you urgently require there? Let's do this, everyone listening to me. What miracles? What divine intervention? Everyone, do this. Pray to God personally yourself. Pray quietly or silently or loudly where you are, whichever one is possible. Mention the need to God. Pray like this. My Father and my God, in Jesus' name, I need your quick divine intervention on this, on this, on this. Mention your desired miracles by name. Describe the miracle you need, where you need urgent intervention to God. It could be for self or your children, your parents, your siblings, and so on. It could be on your job, your career, your business, your ministry, your traveling, your marriage, your babies, conception, project, program, and so on. Voice it out to God. Pray on your own for yourself. God's ministry angels are ready to go on assignment for you. Tell it out to God. Tell it out to God. Don't keep quiet. Say it again and again. Now be responding with amen. I receive it as I add my voice to this prayer. May your silent prayers to God be answered openly and loudly. Your expectations shall become your manifestations. God will hear your prayers. You shall tell a good story here soon. In Jesus' name, say amen. I receive a divine instruction to pray specially for 20 categories of people. Breadwinners, job seekers, job owners, soul winners, caregivers, waiting singles, waiting couple, kingdom financiers, approval seekers, manufacturers and producers, marketers, students, preachers, health seekers, the sick, destiny helpers, the mentors, homemakers, platform and network owners, content creators, government officials, and those in security apparatus, personnel. Interestingly, we have done three for job owners yesterday. Today's prayer is for soul winners. So all those involved in kingdom work, in soul winning, I want to pray for you. All those with broadcasting turning point to others, those that would like, make, comment, and share uh, online whenever we are having programs. You are all preaching the gospel, extending the gospel to others. Those who actively go out on street evangelism, sharing the gospel with other people, all open your hands. Proverbs 11 verse 30 says, the he that winners soul is wise. Receive God's grace for wisdom. Receive soul winners' blessings. As you labor for the Lord, it shall show God's favor shall be on you. In heaven, you shall receive soul winners' crown. May God give you more souls to win for him. Say amen and amen. Tomorrow's prayers will be for caregivers. So doctors, nurses, all those of you in medical line, NGOs, and the rest of it, get ready. The prayer tomorrow is for caregivers. August 15 celebrants, your birthday prayers. You are blessed. Your birthday is blessed. You will live long and fulfill your days in Jesus' name. Happy birthday. Listeners, let's rush. 
first issue for insightful and practical teachings today. Good morning, Pastor and TPGF. I'm a woman of 47 years, was married for 10 years without a child. He was diagnosed for uh, of low sperm count and I, hormonal imbalance. He hardly take his drugs. IVF was suggested, but he refused. So I divorced him three years ago due to that and emotional violence. I'm thinking of laying with a man so I can have my own child too before I'm 50 years, since no godly man came to my way. Wow, how I wish both of you were connected to a platform like this or you are under a good pastoral care in those 10 years of marriage. Truth be told, not having a child in a marriage should not invalidate the marriage, should not lead to divorce. Procreation is just one of the reasons or purposes for marriage, not all the reasons which we are according to our, our tradition, African tradition. No, no couple should divorce because babies are not forthcoming. I just want to drop that, that truth for all listeners and those that may be going through that struggle or that experience now. These days, there are so many medically assisted way of having a child. Then laying with a man to have a child of your own, oh no, that will be adultery or fornication, which God hates. Instead, you could do adoption. And of course, a man will still come along your way. These are not easy issues, and there are no easy solutions. Ignorance has really led many people into making mistakes and errors not easy to fix. Next, good day, sir. Please advise me. My wife and I have four children already, as agreed. She took in again, and I told him to use drug and flush it out, but she refused. I feel unhappy most times about it, and also each time I have to pay school fees and all the other expenses on the fifth child. Please, how can I get out of this? The eldest is 10, and the youngest is 4 years old. Wow, I can imagine many listeners saying, wow, ah, ah, ah. One good thing about this platform is that all writers are anonymous, so each one of us can truly and fully express our mind, all our mind which this person has done. To start with, do not flush the pregnancy out. Before God, that would be murder, killing an unborn child. Then why did you allow it to happen in the first instance? With all the knowledge of contraception or contraceptive pregnancy prevention, you and your wife did not act wisely. And I wish other couples will learn from this. Prayers, Wishing and hoping it does not happen will not stop conception or pregnancy if you don't take practical steps to prevent it from happening. And it is not only the women that can use contraceptives. Men can also do if you have gotten the number of children you desire to have. The use of condom is there, even though not 100% safe. But even men too, can do a surgery of sterilization to prevent pregnancy from happening. Now that five children are here, accept what God has what has happened. Trust God to help you through. Then do prevention now. If not, a sixth child might just be on the way. Next, my husband has left me for another woman for more than six years now, and I'm still waiting for him to return. And he has not. Daddy, should I continue to wait for him to eternity without having someone else? Please advise me. Wow. Here is another one. One challenge I have on issues like this is that we have no way of hearing from the other person. Some issue must have led to that separation. Then are you really sure that he has married, been married to another woman? Where is the parental or family connection in this, because marriage is a family issue, as I have said again and again. If it is a proper marriage, then it should not be as separated or terminated without the two families sitting together again. But if he has gone 
to another woman, as you said, then that marriage is over. You too should move on with your life. But be sure you are properly divorced. Listeners, no easy way out of marriage problem. Send this to all on your contact. Do so daily. Today is the D-Day, the prayer mountain service day in Ikeja, Lagos. TPGF members and listeners in and around Lagos leave home on time to beat the morning traffic. Two services we hold as usual. 7 to 9 a.m. is the first service. 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. is second service. Prayer focus today is presenting your family before God. Come and bring all members of your family and come and stand in the gap for those that are not around. Oh, come, good enough. Schools are on holidays now. Bring all your children and uh, bring their photographs and the things of those that may not be here. Joshua 24 verse 15, he said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Bring your entire household, your family, list their names, bring their photographs, bring their things, encourage those that are around in the city to come to prayer mountain. Let's present ourselves as a family. The anointed man too shall be given out free to everyone coming for praying and doing miracle. Same two services we hold in Dominion City, Ibadan, Kolobo, Abel, Kota, Oshobo, Akure, Potakot, Anuyo, simultaneously be there and it shall be live stream. So call them from all over the world where you are listening to me now. Have you paid your tithe and sow your seed in your latest earning? 10% of our income belongs to God for the expansion and extension of his kingdom. Then our battle seed, thanksgiving seed, partnership commitment seed, and the seed of 888, we are doing this eight month of the year. Do as God lays in your heart. You can listen to other people's testimonies as they faithfully pay their tithe and sow all the various seed. If you do what they do, you'll be getting what they are getting. I speak to everyone's life today, you will matter. Go and know fulfillment. Go and seal hair. Go and have a breakthrough. You are going to return with testimonies. What God cannot do does not exist. God sent me because of you. Heaven will not rest until you are truly blessed and fulfilled. I'm Femi Emmanuel. I love you. TPGF, answer, truly blessed. Bye.